last week on All In. He, he's like a little, a little gnat that just won't stop. Like, like get, get off me, man. Get off me, man. After dropping consecutive games on the road, Ohio heads back to Athens for a two-game homestand versus Mac East foe Bowling Green and Big South regular season champion North Carolina Asheville in the Bracket Buster. Okay, be ready to shoot the ball. Get up against that sucker. All right, let's do it. position work. Here we go. Offensive position work against the zone here, and then we'll, then we'll go defensive. Okay. Coop, you got it. One, two, three. All for one, one for all. One, two, three. Finish, here you go. You know, the one thing about coaching 18 to 22-year-olds is, you know, a guy that I used to play for and coach with, Paul Patterson, used to say, those guys get over losses a lot quicker than we do, you know, as coaches. Yeah, I was a little disappointed because of the loss. But still, we, we it's, still, it's still room for more progress. And just good teams go through a little adversity, so it's still room for improvement. I, just, I was just thinking about getting to practice the next day and working on the things that we messed up on. When you've been on the road for a week, getting home can do wonders for a team's morale. Fortunately for Ohio, the Bobcats called the best arena in the Mid-American Conference home. Well, it's a huge advantage for us, not only the building itself. Um, you know, obviously, I think our facility is, is terrific. There's a lot of tradition here. Um, on top of that, the environment itself, the atmosphere itself on game night, you know, with the ozone and the crowds that we get, and, you know, we're leading the league in attendance. Once again, you know, um, we, hear, we get great support here at home. We get great support from the community. So, you know, the people are what brings the convo to life on game night. The man behind the vision of the Convocation Center is former Ohio University President Vern Alden who during the late 1960s set out to build one of the best arenas in the Midwest. There were three reasons why we did it. Number one, the students had been clamoring for a place where they could have big name entertainment. The Memorial Auditorium wasn't big enough for that. Number two, we needed to have a better space for athletic uh, basketball, wrestling, and so on. And Grover Center was then too small. Number three, I said that for Southeastern Ohio, it'd be nice, for example, if our auto dealers could have auto shows in, in the building. Well, the, the editor of the Ohio University Post said, auto shows, you can't even get a car in the, in the, in the convocation center. Well, just to prove he was wrong, I rented a convertible and I put Diana Ross, who was the first entertainer, I put Diana Ross in the back seat with my daughter and we drove out onto the convocation floor just to prove that we could get a car in here. <laughs> the convo has been an Athens landmark for over 40 years. The exterior is unmistakable. The interior has been constantly improved to keep up with the demands of a modern athletic department. Fundraising is underway for a full renovation of the locker room. You guys are very excited about that. And you know, locker rooms where you know, where you spend a lot of time as a student athlete and as a player. You know, probably other than, you know, your dorm room where they use that or their apartment where they use that almost exclusively to sleep, you know. Uh, it's probably the area where they spend the most time. And so we want to make that as comfortable as possible, as cutting edge as possible, and, and really um, up to date with, uh, with what we feel like kind of the standards of our, of our program are. And I know our guys are looking forward to the renovation starting this summer and you know, moving into a new space starting this upcoming fall. After an off day on Sunday, Ohio begins the business of preparing for Bowling Green. With last week's two losses fresh in their minds, Ohio knows they're about to embark on a crucial stretch of games. It's all we've been talking about yesterday and today. That's all we can control, okay? Attitude, effort, toughness, togetherness for 40 minutes. We worry about the results at the end. Right now, we're going to go out and we're going to have fun competing together. We're going to be aggressive and we're going to swim. 
That's what we're going to do. It's got to be everybody ready to do that. I want to be tough out there with great voice and composure. I want guys dapping one another up. I want guys talking to one another. I want guys communicating, and we're going to play together. That's what the standard is around here, and that's what the hell we're going to do. We're going to do both those things right there for 40 minutes. All right? Let's bring it in. Let's go. Ohio and Bowling Green battle on here in Southeast Ohio. Tip by Kellogg, saved by Smith. Corner left, Cooper for three, bang! An early tray bomb, Ohio on top, 6-5. It's Smith on a back door to the rim and he slams it down. On cue, a two-hand stufferoo. Cats on top by three. Rim run, Gord slams it down, count it, and a foul off of the inbound. Taylor looped it up there, Gord slammed it down. Keeley holds it low, dribbles, dumps it into the post further for a two-hand rim rocker. The second dunk on the night for John Smith. Ohio 28, Bowling Green 26, halftime from the convo. I want to continue to emphasize the offensive grass. Good job in the first half. You got eight out of 17 back. It's almost 50%. It's excellent. Notice guys were going 50-50 balls, loose balls, charges, hustle plays. Turkey were a big part of that, my man. Okay, we got to do a good job of that again in the second half. If you look good, just execute what we call. Don't telegraph passes. Don't assume. Be strong with the ball. Okay, slow down. All right, be aggressive. See, old, my old boss said to me, aggressively patient. All right, be aggressively patient. It is Calhoun. Goes up block by Smith. Cooper behind the screen to the top, goes to the foul line, Mac logo, teardrop left hand, bottom, 34-26. Corner left, Kellogg wide open for three, booked it. I got your answer right here. 12.35 to go, Cats plus eight again, 41-33. Low block right, Seeley shoots and scores. Falcons 55, Ohio 52, 6.05 to go for the game. Now it's Coop, left wing three. Bang! We're tied at 55. Outlet Cooper runs one on four to the rim. Baker, yes, caught it at a foul. Oh, DJ's been solid tonight. Media timeout right now. 3.51 to go for the ball game. Ohio 61, Bowling Green 55. Backdoor Smith, two and dunk. Oh, what a night for John Smith. 68-59, this one's done. Painted green and white. And in game 26 of the year for Ohio basketball, the Bobcats get to 20 wins overall and eight wins in the Mid-American Conference. Final score, Ohio 72, Bowling Green 59. That's what good teams do. They step up in different ways. And I thought today, boy, you guys really stepped up big time, you guys that came off the bench. Veterans, you made some big plays late in the game like you should, like we expect, and you got it done. Great job. Why play just seven or eight guys when you can play 10? The key to Ohio's win over Bowling Green, the bench. John Gross has the confidence in his full roster to know he can routinely rely on a 10-man rotation to get the job done. Coach Ford started the, uh, the saying of the bench mob, and we just kind of ran with it. Um, I was trying to talk to those guys right before the tip every game, tell them to be ready, that we're counting on the bench mob, and those guys have given us a dimension in our fourth year here that we have not had before. And that is the depth 
and bench play that's necessary to be competitive more consistently. The captain of the bench mob movement in the fly by the Falcons, Ricardo Johnson. The 6'4 sophomore from Covington, Kentucky has made a name for himself by bringing some good old fashioned bluegrass bounce off of the bench. His hustle is invaluable. Ricardo is a phenomenal kid. He's an extremely hard worker. So I love his competitiveness and love what he represents both on and off the court. I just, I just think, like, I just want to get better every single day and every single game. He may, he may not be the greatest shooter, well, but he's going to play hard regardless. He's not going to let, let you punk him. He has too much pride for that. Just, just have a self-pride. You, you take pride in what you do every day or what you do on the court. Maybe you can make a good play for your teammate. And just let them know that, or let the other team know that, oh, no, he, he don't play games. That guy right there, he doesn't play games. Like, he's going to give you a best shot. I think he's a tremendous defender. I feel comfortable putting him on a lot of guys. You know, he can guard three or four positions, which is very rare. And so he brings that to the table. While Ricardo may be described as a warrior on the court, you'd never know it by passing him on the street. He might lead the league in smiles. He always has one on. He just, he's one of those guys, a little bit like Stevie Taylor, just loves life. You know, he just soaks it in every day. Hanging with him, you know, just, just, he's a funny guy. You know, you just can't help yourself and smile around. You just got to understand there's people out there that's, that's living a harder life than you are. So you got to, you got to just be happy. You only live once. Another member of the bench mob who found success versus Bowling Green, 6'8 freshman Taekwon Gord. A long, lean, athletic big man from Charleston, West Virginia. Gord turned it up a notch against the Falcons. Turk brings a lot of energy. He has what I call high motor. He's so athletic. He plays good defense. He's long. He's able to make plays, hustle plays at that, take charges. I think that's really good for our team. I just want to be aggressive. Do what I can do best for my team. Little things, dive on loose balls, uh, hustle plays, take charges block, whatever, help D, whatever I had to do. He's one of those guys that when he's in the game, he just makes stuff happen with his athleticism, his length, and his motor. If we can continue to get him to play with that motor all the time, I think he could be a really special player moving forward. Can't, can't expect things to come easy. You got to work at it. If you want to be great, you got to work at it. UNCA is the fourth highest scoring team in the country. Any game with them is a track meet. To win on Saturday, the Cats will have to be faster than the Dogs. It's going to be a, it's going to be a tremendous you know, challenge. Um, for us, it's going to be really, uh, the challenge starts on, with guarding them. I mean, they average 82 points a game, and they play extremely fast. Okay. Already won the regular season championship. They're going to be the one seed in their conference tournament championship. They play five seniors in their top seven. They're one, two, and three, all average double figures. They're two-man, a combo guard named Dickey, I think is really good, total package guy, okay? They average 82 points a game, which is ninth in the country, okay? Their tempo, 31st in the country. They try to outscore you, okay? They are rolling that thing up the floor. But they're, they're very good on offense, very good. In fact, their offensive efficiency is higher than any team you play in the Mid-American Conference, all of them. If we execute, I think we can get what we want. Reggie's got a big challenge ahead of him. When game day finally arrives, each player has their own routine. For roommates Nick Goff, David McKinley, and Evo Baltic, that routine includes hanging out in their apartment, playing video games before heading to the morning shoot around. I mean, I usually just try to do the same thing before every game. Like, I'll do this, then uh. I always watch my Michael Jordan DVD. I got a whole bunch of them, so I just kind of get focused a couple hours before the actual tip off.
Got to get back to transition. You know, everybody keeps asking me about the tempo of the game. Are you concerned that they're going to try to play that fast? No. Okay. We'll, 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 we got to get stops on defense, obviously, but we will run. Okay. Let's make sure we're running and we're in, uh, you know, that we're in attack mode. Try to stay the best you can within your routine. Okay, within your routine. Tonight at 7, got to be ready to go. Anxious to see how we come out. Someone asked me yesterday, hey, coach, you think your bench is going to come off with as much energy as it did Wednesday night? He gave me the old Frank Solich line. We'll see. Once shoot-around is done, the team heads to the pregame meal to give their bodies the fuel they'll need for tonight's contest. After the meal, players head back home to spend some time with visiting family before the game. Hey, Nick. Hey, Paula. Hey. How are you doing? How are you? Good to see you. Good. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Good. 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 No, your nails I'm are... loosening up his muscles, so he's ready yeah, to okay. go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> like here he goes. This is going to be rougher than the game, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure he's game right. Uh, what's this? Oh, you got to get the work in, though? Yeah. Can I get one of these detailed yeah. reports like this for every team? Wait, yeah, be down there by five or something? Yeah, yes, uh, I mean, that one so up like really interesting. All right, stretch. Yeah. All right, good luck. Thank you. Go get them. Bye. Okay. Take them down. We want a 29 <laughs> spread at the end. So <laughs> right. I don't know what that means. Bye. 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 I'll see you guys after. How do we lock it? Just go. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> All right, man. The Bracket Buster matchup is another televised home game for the Bobcats, one of many throughout the season. Calling the game for ESPN, former Bobcat standout and assistant coach Reggie Rankin. Rankin played for Ohio from 1987 to 1990, then stayed in Athens as an assistant coach before moving on to coach at Georgia and Nebraska. While a coach at Ohio, Rankin mentored current Bobcat assistant coach Dustin Ford. Well, well Athens is, is very special to me. Like I said, I had a great experience here. Um, just seeing the job that John Gross has done with the program. I think the program is in great hands. Um, I really like the players. Um, they've had success, instant success pretty much. And uh, I expect that to continue to build. And, and uh, it's just always a, an honor to come back to a place that uh, I hold real dear. As the game tips off, the Cats give an alum something to be very proud about. Loops it back to the left boundary. Taylor for three. Bang! 11-3. Stevie Taylor knocks down his second three in as many contests. Outlet 
to Cooper across the attack, cat at center jump, middle of the floor, two and pass. Right side, Kellogg for three. Book it. And Ohio is running this joint tonight. with you, I looked at the stat sheet, we played a little bit better than I thought. We shot 44% from the field. Terrific toughness down there. Terrific toughness down there. You have the disposition this half, you guards, that they're pressuring. You know what? We played these teams of pressure before. If I want to catch the ball on the wing, I'm going to catch the ball on the wing. Okay? You ain't going to pressure me into playing any faster or slower than I want to play. <laughs> to the foul line. Now it's Dickey high on the left side. Right hand dribble, splits two, ball deflected by Keeley and off it. Off it throws it to Keeley, two hand rim rocker. Ohio 40, Asheville 20, 17, 25 to go. Final horn, Ohio earns its 21st win, the most of any MAC team thus far this year. The victory also marks Ohio's 15th home win of the season, a new school record. Ohio will have to release the ball. Gord to Goff on the left wing, bang from three. Nick Goff is a scoring machine. There are only two weeks of regular season play left before the Mid-American Conference Tournament in Cleveland. With the Cats still on the hunt for a critical bye to the semifinals, they have only four games left to prove they're all in.